Okay, we're live. Tonight is our weekly CFA Q&A. I don't know what kind of sunset we're going to get tonight. It was uh, cloudy today. It was uh, a little bit rainy, not here, but uh, sort of out there. And the dogs are going crazy down the uh, down in the valley there. I don't know if you can hear them. Always sunny in Philadelphia. What a classic! Loved loved that show. Brazil. Will you be doing another poem reading soon? Uh, I did one yesterday in the CFA video. That uh, was a simple one. Good timber. I think it's got a good message to it. It wasn't really a deep, a deep one, but uh, you know, has a good lesson for life in there. Um, I'm thinking that the first, uh, the first Monday of every month would be a good time to do one. So the first Monday uh, of May, and I'm uh, debating between a, a couple. Uh, I'm trying to find a, or at least introduce a poet I haven't, I haven't done yet. I think I've done, you know, two different ones. So, no, one, one, two, three, four, five different ones now. Yeah, so trying to find, uh, trying to find a new one that isn't difficult to read. Some you have to read with an accent to get the right to get the right sound out of the poem. You got to read with either an Irish or a Scottish accent, and <laughs> I don't know if I can carry that through the whole poem. Sydney, uh, what do we need done before our review? Of course, the content, but should the end of chapter questions be one done one time as well before our thirty fifth review? So, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the end of chapter questions because I'm doing the 2025 content now for level three. Uh, and there's these, the way the CFA curriculum is written now, um, there's a lot more examples within the reading, these long examples. Sometimes they go on for two or three pages. They have four or five parts to them. And I go through those and I find that they're fairly well written. I get to the end of chapter questions and it's just absolute disappointment. They're, they're just terrible questions, uh, oftentimes wrong. That, that, you know, I'm sort of, I always said, you know, like do the end of chapter questions, but I don't know. I'm feeling that, that there's not a lot of value in the end of chapter questions as far as uh, preparing you for an exam. Uh, I think that you get a lot more understanding uh, and a lot better preparation, I think, for the exam by using those long examples within the reading, going through each of them, making sure you fully understand them. Um, CFAI does say that oftentimes the structure of their questions for the exam is taken from those, from those examples. Uh, now, I want to be clear, they're not saying that the exam questions are taken from the examples are saying the structure of the question is taken from the example. So being that they're better written, they're much more detailed. They have a lot more exposition about how they get to the answer. Um, I seem to think that I would prioritize those over end of chapter questions. Um, Cause from what I'm seeing, especially at level three for 2025 is the end of chapter questions are a colossal waste of time. Uh, either they're completely juvenile and obvious and, and many of them you don't even have to read. You don't even have to read anything to answer them uh, or they're just completely wrong. Uh, I mean, wrong to a point that you couldn't get the same answer as them. Uh, either new information is introduced in the answer that you didn't have, or it's just completely wrong, um, which really isn't the case with the examples. So I am, I'm slowly shifting away from 
end of chapter questions. I think I think I think they're a waste of time. Um, so, when can we register for level three, twenty twenty five? As soon as CFAI opens it up, we can't uh, list it any sooner than that. Uh, we can prepare early, uh, but we can't list anything. And I can't really tell you anything about it in terms of, you know, the material or the content. I can give an opinion on it. And I have opinions. Oh, boy, do I have opinions. But I can't really say too much more about it. I believe it's early in February, like either February 9th or February 15th, somewhere somewhere around there. Oh, it's not February. May, May 9th or May 15th. So I think we're four to five weeks away from it now. What is it today? April 9th. So we got, yeah, about four, yeah, four to five weeks. Four to five weeks away. Where is this beautiful view coming from? This is Costa Rica. Yeah, that's Costa Rica. Looking out towards the Pacific, you're looking west. Uh, if you go over those mountains and keep walking for a while, you will hit the Pacific Ocean. And then another piece of land and then the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so it kind of like hits ocean then there's a little piece of land that juts down off the side of Costa Rica, off the Pacific Coast, and then you're back into the ocean again. Still, we're facing uh, west, obviously. I want to ask if anyone wants a career in deal advisory, uh, big four, then after CFA level one, he should be doing completing CFA first. Or uh, let me uh, let me read that again. I want to ask if anyone wants a career in deal advisory. Big four, well, I guess for the big four, then after CFA level one. He should be doing completing CFA first or after level two start FRM. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it now. Um, FRM is financial risk manager, right? That's risk management. Um, I don't know that that, that is... Um, immediately or directly relevant to deal advisory. Um, risk management is more operational, right? Uh, deal advisory is a little bit more strategic. So I, I don't know that it would be directly relevant. Um, although I will say it's not entirely useless, right? So it, it's not as if somebody would look at it and say, oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, I just don't know that it would be that somebody would look at it and say, oh, absolutely, definitely. But it could, it could make the difference, you know. But listen, anything, anything you want to accomplish in life requires a sacrifice of something. You have, as long with everyone else, a limited amount of hours in a day. So what you have to do is prioritize, and say, well, what are my priorities? Because if you don't know what your priorities are, you end up sticking a whole bunch of letters behind your name uh, when maybe you should have been doing something else. So yeah, collecting letters is, is, is a, you know, I think uh, a fun thing to do, uh, a noble thing to do, really, if you're doing it for the purposes of the knowledge itself. But you do have to give up other things to get this done. Uh, you do have to get a certain amount of credentialing done, but I, I would caution you on over-credentialing, getting this and getting that and getting this. You know, at some point, you got to stop training for the fight and you actually have to step in the ring and fight. And, and, and that's probably your best training. I, I don't know that I would continually add letters or think about things like that. If you want to get into deal advisory, you're on a path now with CFA, great. Um, just pursue it. Start asking around, what's it gonna take? Who do you know? Who can I talk to? Who, who, who can I ask advice that, that's in the business? 
uh, and just start pushing your way into those social situations where you're going to bump into those people. And if they say FRM, okay, well, do FRM. But, you know, you, too many letters uh, sometimes isn't, isn't, isn't the best use of your time. Based on your studies around learning theory, I was wondering if you had thoughts about the flow concept discussed. Yes. Um, I read Thinking Fast and Slow a long time ago. Uh, I don't recall. I don't recall most of what I read. Most of what I read, I had already been exposed to in PhD seminars on behavioral economics or behavioral finance. But the flow concept, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not calling to mind what that is. Um, trying to stick with CFA questions here. Do you have QBank question videos in the course? If you don't, do you have QBank questions videos? QBank question videos. Uh, no. No, I don't think any videos have been done around uh, the QBanks. Uh, if you don't, what is your recommendation? I don't know if anyone's got a video question bank. Um, I'm, I mean, what is my recommendation? Uh, I, I'm not sure how you're asking me this question. Are you asking me this question in terms of you're looking for a QBank that has videos and you're asking me to recommend one or are you asking me from the point of view of there doesn't seem to be any, do you think it's a good idea to start one? Which, how are you asking me for a recommendation as a student or as an entrepreneur? Um, as a student, uh, I, I don't know anybody who's got a video cue bank. Um, that would be hugely time consuming hugely time consuming to do to listen to the video i mean for some questions a video would be just a complete waste of time i can see for more quantitative ones but usually you could just look right at the solution faster than you can listen to a video because when you see the the, the solution written down um it's it is you can look halfway through, all the way to the end, near the beginning. You can scan the whole thing, but video is sequential. Uh, uh, it's hard to scan the video. You have to listen to the whole thing. Well, what if you only need the last, the very last part? You gotta sit through three minutes to get to it. I, I think it would be more of a waste of time. How does ethics change in level three? Well, it's the same code and standards at all three levels. It's the same code and standards. Um, the questions, the, the context of the questions are a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say trickier, but a little bit deeper uh, uh, as opposed to just being surfacey that you'd get at level one where you just say, well, it's a violation of this or that or this. And this is a little bit, a little bit a little bit more detailed, but, you know, it would be your third, your third pass of ethics. You see it at level one, you see it at level two, you see it at level three. What is additional at level three is there's a longer reading on GIPS, about 50 pages. Uh, and then there's the asset manager code, uh, where you will reach new levels of boredom with that one. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. Um, is this for all levels that EUQ are a waste? Uh, level three, I think they're a waste. Um, having gone through, I, I, I don't really play around in level one or level two much anymore because, well, we do have to taper in new voices, right? I mean, I, I do have an expiration date on my contract, so new voices have to be tapered in. Uh, so level one, I'm probably a little bit overkill for there, but, um, uh, I did do, I believe most of a whole bunch in quant. I did, I think all of fixed income I had done, all of derivatives I had done. Yeah. I found the same thing 
in, uh, in fixed income, the examples were better than the end of chapter questions. And in derivatives, unfortunately, they had a writer who wasn't too bright, um, didn't quite understand how some things were done. So if you're watching the videos, you'll notice that I do correct the reading, saying this is not how it's done. Um, so, yeah, um, I'd say over the last four or five years, the quality of the CFA content uh, has degraded. I don't think that that is controversial. I think you can ask any prep provider uh, that. I don't think that's just my opinion, but the quality of the content has degraded. Um, the amount of mistakes have increased, not just a little, but quite dramatically. Um, and um, a lot of the technical things were taken out, so it has been dumbed down. So not only did they dumb it down, but they didn't even do that well uh, and introduced more mistakes. How do you get that done? How do you make it simpler, make more mistakes and actually make it worse? <laughs> but hey, leave it to a committee. That's what happens when you write a book by committee, right? Uh, I met any CFA charter holders in Costa Rica? No, but two, uh, two candidates, uh, level one uh, and a level three who is uh, very nervous about Thursday. I shouldn't say very nervous. He didn't seem that nervous, but you can't go to sleep Wednesday night as a level three candidate knowing your results are out the next morning uh, and sleep well. I mean, you can't. Even if you think you did well, you you can't because because that's the big one, right? Either it's over or it's not over. I mean, that's that's the big one. It's like, oh, I thought I was done. And, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, I met two. Uh, could you explain for interest rate futures how long the long, how the long side is a lender? To my understanding, interest rate futures are similar to FRAs, but some reason the logic isn't clicking. Um, well, it de I, you know, if, if, if you're lending, uh, at a fixed rate, uh, and interest rates go up by the time you make the loan, well, that's not really a good thing for you. So you'd want to be long in interest rate future so that you'll make the loan at some rate that you agree on today and the market rate will pay off for you. Um, if you... Uh, are making a loan at a floating rate, well, then you don't care. Uh, you'll just get the market rate at that point in time, unless you want to lock in a rate today, that would be the forward rate agreement, right? Hmm. What is the ideal study system for level one? So there is no ideal. It, it really is uh, dependent upon several things. Um, that are all related to you. There is only one thing that is a constant across everybody. Only one thing, and that's time. You got to put in the time. Plain and simple, you got to put in the time. Uh, and in putting the time, uh, you, you, you have to uh, be comfortable uh, with the uh, you know, uncertainty of it. That when you're reading something, go, I don't get this that you can't just get frustrated and walk away. You got to keep at it. You got to push yourself through it. That's the only way you get better. That's the only constant. Um, as far as how much time, that's dependent upon your ability. Uh, in some topics, you might find <clears throat> that you can get through it <clears throat> really fast. Other topics you might get to and say, oh, I got to slow down for this one. It might take you much longer than the average candidate. There are 10 different topics, so it's not as if all 10 will be difficult. Some may be difficult, some may be easy. Um, but what's difficult for you might be easy for somebody else. So the time that you put in, that's, that's personal. I mean, that's going to be different for everybody. Uh, but time you must put in, that is the only constant. And <clears throat> you can't learn faster than your brain is wired. Every brain has a speed limit. 
Some speed limits are slower, some are faster. Sometimes you get to a tough topic and the streets get really crowded really fast and you got to slow right down. If you attempt to exceed your brain's speed limit, you will learn nothing and you, you, you'll, you'll pick up nothing. You'll be four pages in and go, okay, I, I'm, I'm not following anymore because you went too fast and you're just wasting your time at that point. The only, the only one thing that is ideal is time. Other than that, it's, you know, I mean, you've been a student most of your life to this point. You've gotten A's before. You know what it takes for you to get an A. You do that. Whatever it took for you to get the A, that's what you do. How to revise efficiently during the last 30 days. How to study efficiently two to three subjects within a day. Well, I don't know that you'd want to do two to three subjects within a day, right? I think, I think you'd want to do uh, one or two in a day uh, and um, cycle through them, right? Uh, say, okay, I'm going to review the first two the first three readings of quant today and the first three readings of FSA. Tomorrow I'll do the first two readings of equity and the first two readings of fixed income. And you just keep doing that and then, uh, you know, you, you, you will continually cycle through the readings so that you, you don't spend, you know, three days on one topic, then three days on the next, then three days on the next, but that you are distributing your learning. And take a mock exam. Uh, take one early. Take one early, you, just to see where you where you stand. You may find that in every mock exam you do, um, quant is the easiest thing you got going. Is you're always getting 80, 90, 100 percent on the quant section. Well, then don't spend a lot of time reviewing quant. Uh, you know you, your performance is telling you you got this, so you don't really got to spend a lot of time reviewing what you already know. It feels good to review what you know because as you're reviewing it, you go, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this, I feel really good. Hit the stuff that you don't know. As uncomfortable as it is, that's what you wanna spend the time on. So a mock will at least give you a baseline of where you should be. And I, I've, and when I was a student, I always followed the strategy of picking up from the bottom, is where am I the weakest? That's where I'm going first. Right? Unless, unless there's some cognitive block where I've tried and tried and tried, but I'm just not getting something, you know, and I say, you know what, I'm just going to take my chances and forget this. It, it's just, I'm just not getting it. Forget this. Uh, I'll then, then I'll let it go. But I'll, I'll, I'll usually uh, pick up from the bottom. It's easier to move from a 60 to a 70 than it is to move from an 80 to a 90. It's much easier. In fact, going from 95 to 96 is probably harder than going from 60 to 70 uh, because it's, it's, you're squeezing out every last little bit going from 95 to 96, but there's a whole bunch of low-hanging fruit going from 60 to 70. These uh, cicadas are super annoying, especially that last one there. Uh, let's see. Regarding preparing for level three, which topics in level one and two that are helpful to review before starting level three if I have time? Uh, make sure you understand from level one, make sure you understand fixed income risk and return. Understand your durations because there's a lot of that uh, in fixed income portfolio management and there is no, it takes no time to explain it to you. It's just stuff you gotta know at that point. So make sure you have a good grasp uh, on duration, specifically uh, effective duration, modified duration, Macaulay duration, basis point value. Make sure you have a good understanding of what basis point value is. Uh, and uh, eh, maybe understand, you know, key rate duration can hurt you, although it, it's not the most helpful, but mm, I'd say key rate duration as well. Understand that whole reading and, and um, you'll, I, you'll have a much easier time. Um, level one 
credit, there's a reading on uh, uh, credit, uh, fixed income uh, credit strategies, uh, not strategies, but, uh, you know, assessing credit level two. Uh, I think they're somewhat helpful. Um, level one economics, understanding the business cycle, I think is going to be useful for capital market expectations. Uh, yeah, but yeah, off the top of my head, that's, that's where I am. Yeah. When will you do live sessions for mock exam level three? I believe they'll start in July. Why do you like level three the most? I actually don't like level three the most. I like level two the most. Uh, because it's challenging, because it's 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 quantitative, it's it's arithmetic. I I I I enjoy those things. Um, if I had three words to use for the three levels, level one I would say big. It's big. It's all. It's big. You know, it's over three thousand pages when you add up all the pages in the PDFs. Over three thousand pages. Level two, I'd say challenging. Level three, primarily, I'd say boring. Uh, and with the new modules this year, if you were going to take the private wealth module, uh, boring with a capital B, repeated twice. Uh, and, and the O's stretched out, boring, like that, twice. Twice and you'll have it. Level three is boring. It's not that I like level three, but level three is... Uh, I think closer in, in, in places, closer to the world, um, especially in the fixed income part, the capital market expectations, derivatives, and it's, it can be challenging. Uh, so, you know, I'm sort of more useful, uh, more useful there uh, because I have real world experience. Level one, you don't need real world experience uh, to teach that it's it's stuff you'll find in any any undergrad textbook uh, it is not anything that's proprietary to CFA in the least same with level two uh, you don't really need any real world experience to teach level two because it's it's a lot of process it's, it's just a lot of valuation but level three without some real world experiences you're going to be lacking something uh, you know because there's some things where Unless you know how it works in the real world, it's not going to make any real sense to you. So I'm uh, more useful there. Uh, thanks for talking about over-credentialing. <clears throat> it almost felt like you were talking to me. <laughs> Sat for level three, February 24, past FRMP1, and currently pursuing second master's, age 26. But only six months of work experience determined to get a job when I graduate this May. Yeah, I think, I think you've credentialed enough. <clears throat> um, the biggest credential is experience. It's the biggest credential by far. You need some kind of credentials to get the experience, but uh, the more and more credentials you have, it, you know, after a certain point, it just doesn't matter. Uh, experience is what matters. Instead of spending the next six months preparing for an exam, spend the next six months uh, improving your social network, meeting people, uh, and and uh, you know, getting in getting in the door of certain places. Uh, I think that that's a better spent six months. For level one exam mid November, <clears throat> most effective study strategy and steps. Assume starting from Sunday next week, putting average of three hours, have MM and ICAI. I don't know what ICAI is. <clears throat> um, I think I've already addressed that. Uh, what's the most effective? Think about uh, all, all your education and think about the classes in which you got an A. There you go. There's your, whatever you did for that, that's your effective study strategy right? That's it right there. And, and combine that with putting in the time and you got it. There is no one method, uh, uh, you know, that we could say, here is the method off you go. Uh, you, you have enough experience 
as a student now to assess for yourself what you need to do to get an A. That's, that's your strategy. That's it right there. Why do you think CFA level one passing rate rose so much, 35 to 44? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid a bunch of theories about motivations by CFAI to, you know, raise the pass. I've heard that they got to raise the passing score because more and more people aren't taking it. Enrollment is down. They, they got to make it easier. And I, 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 I don't think that that's, that that's the case. Um, overall, I don't know. Um, uh, it's, it's only a one-time thing. You know, you could just reverse the question and say, well, what caused the passing rate to go down to 35 last time, as opposed to what caused it to go up? 44 is historically the average of where level one used to be. That's, that's historically, uh, about, you know, middle of the road pass rate. So the, I don't know that the question is what caused it to go up, but as much as what caused the last one to go down. Um, I passed level one. What do you recommend for level two? I'm thinking about taking it in November. Yeah. Uh, as just a question, I have no recommendation for you. I know nothing more, uh, than what you've given me. I'm thinking of taking it in November. Usually your instincts are, are, are right. If you feel, you know, if your mind, if you're saying November, there must be a reason why without me going into it then yeah sure recently you graduated with a finance major top grader but to be honest i struggled memorizing in math <clears throat> would that be a problem in taking level one nah, not so much level one but level two is evaluation level so yeah there are uh there are formulas there are formulas so Yeah, but how how did you become a top grader with a finance major if you struggle with that? So maybe you're saying what you're saying is, look, I did it all and I was able to do it, but I find this the hardest part. Yeah, but you still did it, so that means you can do it, so off you go. Thoughts on interest rate? Oh, that's... Um not a CFA question. Signed up for level two, May 24. Only studied fixed income and half of equity so far. Do you think it's still doable for a decent student or should I postpone? Well, I guess the question would be if you postponed, would you would that take the pressure off? Would you feel that whew, you've got time now? And if you say, yeah, then I guarantee you, you probably in September, say the same thing to me. I've barely prepared. So either, either you're going to prepare hard from here to November, uh, or you're not. Um, <laughs> the, uh, this is the, the, was the tone of the video yesterday about postponing is I gave the example of students who are sick for final exams. They're rarely the A students who are sick for final exams. They're usually the C and D students who are sick for final exams, and they never do any better. They never improve their score by, by getting an extra week. They never do any better, so they may as well just do the first one to begin with. Um, if, if you're saying, I don't relish the idea of having to work hard for the next for the next seven weeks. I, I, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm going to defer. Then there's nothing about that statement that tells me that you're going to do it for the next exam. Uh, so if you are deferring, you first have to, I think, you know, be honest with yourself. Uh, is this going to give you more time to do it right? Or is this going to give you more time before you really have to start again? And if you say, well, well, you know, I can take a couple months off or I can slow down or it takes the pressure off, then in September you'll be, you'll be, in, the same, you'll be in the same position. 
if if you think no 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 i'm i'm gonna get a schedule stick with it it's gonna be two hours a day and i'm gonna do it uh then yeah buy yourself more time but only only if you actually buy yourself more time but if you're deferring only to find yourself in the same situation yet again which is usually at least this is what cfai's numbers are showing is that those who defer don't really take advantage of the extra time they've been given. They just let it go until they're faced with, oh my God, I'm back in the same situation again. Uh, so unless you're willing to put in the time and, and willing to put in the hard work, don't defer, just don't show up. Just let it go because <laughs> it's not gonna, at some point you gotta sacrifice. So, uh, I don't, I don't have enough information from your question to determine which, which group to put you in. But you know yourself. I mean, you can be honest with yourself and determine, do you see a deferral as buying you time before you have to start or buying you time so that you can start? For backwardation, there's a strategy where you buy short-dated contracts and sell long-dated contracts. Why is that? You're trying to get rid of the uh, carry. Uh, isn't like you're buying high and selling low? Not really. So uh, it's, it's a backward-dated contract. You're going to buy a backward-dated contract. Um, you've got... You've got carry. Anytime you buy a futures contract, you're gonna you're, you're picking up carry, so that in a backward-dated contract, the spot price is above the futures price. So let's say the spot price drops ten points, but that the futures price was six points below the spot. The spot drops ten points. Um, by expiration, the futures would have only dropped four. You you don't make as much. Uh, in the movement because you have carry that has to decay over time. So if you short something else, you can negate the carry. If you go to the back month, they're usually far more stable, meaning that they don't really move that much. So all you're doing is you're negating, you're, you're negating the carry. Um, and it does provide you uh, some protection that, that if you're wrong, you get some protection, but not a lot on the back month. Um, and to be clear, it's, it's, not, it's not as easy as it sounds. A lot of times um, for the back month, you do have to go OTC uh, because you're not going to have a very liquid exchange traded contract to get that done uh, at all. Uh, and some contracts don't even go out far enough to provide the protection that you need. So it sounds good, but it's uh, if you if you've got carry, if, if if you if you have negative carry, there's usually there there can be other ways to to try to find an offset for your carry. In one of the mocks, we were asked to calculate the justified trailing PE. While calculating G, we had to also count. Well, I, 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 I don't have the question in front of me, so I, I, I don't, I don't know what I can do for you here. Um, yeah, I, without seeing the question, I, I don't know what I could do for you. Is it possible for me to take level three while I'm still doing my bachelor's degree? Uh, I don't think so. And the more obvious question is, why would you want to? You can't get those three letters until you have the work experience. So you're not going to get a lot out of level three with no work experience. With some work experience, um, parts of level three become alive and relevant for you because you're familiar with it. But if you're not familiar with the real world, level three is just purely theoretical and abstract and maybe harder to grasp. Plus, you still can't get those letters till you have the three years work experience. So what's the rush? What's the rush? Relax. So I think the answer to your question is no, I don't think so. And why would you want to? Uh, uh, you 
mentioned that you would prepare analysis videos for different sectors. That's already done. Is this for the future or for your website only? Can we find those? Those are in the applied level. Uh, in the applied level. I passed level one this February for level two I'm planning November. In terms of learning techniques, is there anything that should be taken care of in comparison with level one? Level two uh, is a lot more involved, right? It's evaluation level. You, you could probably memorize your way through some sections of level one. Level one's a lot of declarative knowledge, right? This is what this is. This is what that is. It's, it's really to get you uh, up to speed with the language of the, of the industry. Level two uh, is very process oriented, which means you got to get your hands dirty. Uh, you're not going to memorize your way through formulas. You actually have to work with them. Uh, so level two is much more hands-on um, in terms of working through uh, arithmetic issues uh, than level one was. Much more hands-on. Level two Canada, May 24, do you expect half or more of exam questions to be mathematical calculations? Well, I don't think so, no. Um, there are formulas. You will have to calculate things. However, I think that maybe 25% of the exam would be to actually get your calculator out and do something up to, up to 25. I don't know 25, but I can't imagine going over 25. Probably another 25% or up to 25 would be conceptual questions around the valuation. So that here's the situation we have. We have this business with these types of qualities and we're thinking about valuing it. The most appropriate valuation technique would be discounted cash flow, sales compare, you know, so it's more conceptual like that than actually uh, arithmetic. I've completed six readings. Oh, hang on. Guidance on the recommended strategies for individuals with non-finance backgrounds successfully prepared. Give yourself more time. There are prerequisite readings. If you have no background from business school or in finance, um, you're going you're gonna to need the prerequisite readings. Give yourself more time. Uh, to get through those. Those are non-testable, so you don't really have to push yourself on those. You just have to make sure as you read them, go, okay, do I understand this stuff? Okay, I get it. And then, and then you're ready. I think, I think just reading them and reading them carefully and slowly and on every page saying, okay, do I understand this? Good. I can turn the page and go to the next one. Yeah, give yourself maybe six weeks to get through all the prerequisite readings. Uh, so you'll probably want to start if six months is enough time, then you want to start seven and a half to eight months ahead. And just for the first month and a half or two, just focus on the prerequisite readings. Make sure you understand them. Completed six readings in quant and started FSA. Or do you suggest complete quant first? No, interleave it. Uh, you can do quant, FSA, quant, FSA. It's really boring to stick with one topic all the way through, I think. In June, I'll be 23 months from graduation, so I actually can take the CFA, yep. Do you know what type of information they asked me to verify? No, I don't. No, I don't. In level one, uh, the curriculum said, the more dispersion the coupon, the more convexity of the bond. So zero coupon bond has the most convexity. I can't get my head around this. Uh, yeah, there's that's a conditional statement. It's not the more coupons, the more convexity. It's for the same duration. The more dispersion of the cash flows, the more convexity. For the same duration. So an 18-year zero-coupon bond has a duration of 18. A 30-year quarterly bond has a duration, let's say, of 18. The 30-year bond will have more convexity than the 18-year bond because it has more dispersion of cash flows. 
for the same duration. That's the conditional that you're missing there. Are you enjoying the CFA teaching program so far? Will you renew your contract? Um, so that's a big question. I enjoy teaching. It is the essence of me. Uh, it is where I find meaning in life, is being useful. And I do have a particular talent uh, at that. Maybe not talents in a lot of other things, but I've always been good at that. Ever since I, I was in university, I, I was a, a TA, then a GA, and I was a tutor, and I, I, always, I, I always had a particular skill for being able to explain things in a very straightforward, simple way, a more accessible way. And, and it's what brings me meaning. But that does not mean that I, I would continue on uh, with the same thing. Uh, I'm working on the applied level and I get, I find that that is so much more rewarding um, because I can, I can create my own content at that, at that point. And to take something complex and to break it down so that everybody can understand it, I think I get so much joy out of doing that. It's like it's each one of these things, videos I do is three three to four weeks of deep dives, I mean really deep, to get them done, but the reward that I get after is incredible. Given that the CFAI content is being dumbed down over the years and being written more and more poorly, I'm actually losing interest, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm, I'm actually kind of losing interest in the whole thing and it takes everything in me uh, sometimes to push myself to say, okay, let's just do it. But the amount of fact checking I have to do makes it uh, tiring. Would I renew my contract again? If I had to say now, I'd say no. If I had to say it now, I'd say no. I'm taking the level one in August. Would you recommend to just one time study the curriculum on the book? Mm, let me read that again. I'm taking it in August. Would you recommend to just one time study the curriculum on the book? You mean go through the readings just once? No. Unless you're, unless you're absolutely gifted uh, and that strategy has worked for you in the past. If in every course you've taken, you've gotten A's by simply just reading all the chapters once and okay, now you know it, then, then yeah, if that's, if that is what has paid off for you in the past, but ask yourself, have you ever gotten an A in a course by only reading everything once? And if the answer is no, then the answer is no for this as well. All right. I struggle with understanding quants, although I scored above 70% in level one. Will this impact my preparation for level two? And how much correlation is there between quants and nine others? So at level two, I think you'll be happy to know there's very little spillover from uh, quant to the other sections. You're going to do multiple regression. You're going to do time series. You're going to do uh, some, uh, I think there's big data in there, machine learning, that kind of stuff. But it's really, it's really siloed. Uh, so that you're not going to get to another part of the curriculum where suddenly you have to use multiple regression or time series again like level one where you had to use a lot of the stuff in portfolio, uh, uh, portfolio management, uh, where you saw a whole bunch of it in fixed income, where you saw it in derivatives. No, the level two quant doesn't spill over into the other sections like it did at level one. And there is no quant at level three. So you don't have to worry about it spilling over uh, to level three. Uh, lots of people with ADHD and other debilitating illnesses that have had a hard time studying and taking exams. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of resources uh, to address studying. <clears throat> yeah, so that's something I don't know uh, a lot about. So I, 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 um, I, I don't know that I have... Um, anything to say on that. Um, 
yeah i don't uh i don't know anything about that so i'm uh i'm just gonna steer clear of that one i don't even have an opinion on it i'm struggling hard with fsa my friend who's an accountant he said do not try to understand all these rules memorize them first understand later found it counterintuitive well yeah understanding requires you would first have to get into the accounting standards of why something is the way it is which leads you really deep into the accounting space um yeah i sort of agree with him on that that if you don't quite understand you know uh like with interest uh when you're building something that you're capitalizing the interest why are you doing that there's a reason for it but that would that would bring you into the standards the accounting standards and and that's probably not where you need to go yeah i think he might have a point there uh, of just memorizing it why 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 go deep on the standards um there are some some accounting rules uh for some companies i look at i don't quite understand the accounting rule you know, and I'd like to see the transaction behind it sometimes. And even after seeing the transaction, I think, but why do it this way? And it's the standard, you know, here are the standards and you start reading. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to remember that this is the way it's done because I just don't feel, <laughs> I just don't feel like doing this accounting stuff. Uh, let me turn this camera here. Uh, the sky over there seems to be a lot better tonight. Look at that. Usually I don't get much on that uh, on that side but uh, it's looking better there so let's go there uh what do we got 607 we got time can i pass your level two can i pass level two with your videos and then the chapter questions from cfai without reading everything i don't know can can you do it I've had people tell me they have, uh, but that doesn't make it a rule, right? That makes it those people. There is a distribution. Uh, some people on one end of the distribution can do it. I don't know if you can because I know nothing about you. So is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Is it possible for you? I don't, I don't have an answer for that. Maybe. Curious what you find boring about level three. To me, I like it. I, I like it being closer to the real world and less theoretical. Okay, what do I find boring? Uh, well, I mean, ethics is boring altogether, right? Ethics, asset manager code, GIPS, I find boring. Um, I find uh, private wealth management extremely boring extremely extremely boring um so it's just there's just not a lot of excitement there uh whereas at level two almost every section i found interesting other than ethics of course but every every section quant was fun because i like numbers economics was was fun there's nice theoretical reading in there uh everything was fun uh, at level three, capital market expectations, kind of fun. Derivatives, kind of fun. Uh, currency management, kind of fun. Fixed income, kind of fun. Equity, I think they could have done a hell of a lot of better job on equity. Look at that sentence I just, I just put out there, how terrible it was grammatically. They could have done a much better job with equity. It's so much more exciting than what they presented you know, and they just let the ball drop on that, that you, you're going through it, you're going, oh, God, you've made this, you've made something exciting really boring here. Oh, you know, they could have gone, I think, and when they introduced hedge funds, I thought, okay, well, you, now you, you know, there's a whole reading on it. And I thought, well, now you, you made this boring too, right? I mean, this is about portfolio management. Hedge funds don't mean variance optimized. They do all sorts of exciting things. Why, why, not, why not bring in a whole bunch of those strategies and go into a little bit more detail on these strategies? Merger ARB is great. Don't just say, you know, here's merger ARB, here's, here's the structure, here's the type of leverage that's done, there you go. No, let's do some of this stuff. 
So it just was like, well, uh, you know, didn't didn't seize the opportunity to to go a little bit further. Um, manager selection is boring. <laughs> I mean, so you know, I, I just found them boring. It's like, well, I, you know, it's not analysis really. It's not asset management. It's it's not. I just found it was, uh, you know, for me, I just found it was a little boring. So more more boring readings than 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 what you'd get at level two or level one. If CFA worth it to get into fund management. Well, you don't just get into fund management. You you have to work your way into fund management. You don't just get into it. Uh, so you have to fight for a spot somewhere. You have to fight for, uh, 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 you know, some space in somebody's mind, you know, that, that's going to work with you. You have to, you have to stand out above everyone else. You have to have some skill set. CFA... Uh, helps develop that skill set in you. So, um, if if you are going to arrive at fund management someday, which is which is basically asset management, um, the CFA is a good pathway to get you there. Mm, going back to what I find boring about level three, uh, I've had the opportunity to see the new the new modules. Uh, private wealth management module and the new private wealth management uh, readings. Uh, and like I said, capital B on boring. Uh, teaching by lists, which is the most unsatisfying way to learn is by lists. And there are readings with list after list after list. And if that's what you want to do, 600 pages of memorizing lists, that might just be for you. But dear God, is it boring. That's about all I can say on that. How would you get exposure to Canadian REITs if you live in the U.S.? I don't know that, that you are disallowed from buying Canadian REITs if you live in the U.S. I don't know that you're disallowed from doing that. Um, it's, I don't think there's any restriction on capital from Canada about buying, uh, buying REITs if you live in the U.S. Have you voiced your concerns directly to CFA regarding pathways? No, not really. I know the chief product officer of CFA is looking for leading prep provider opinions. <clears throat> um, well, no one asked me about my opinion, but it's hard to give an opinion until you go through it, all right? We don't really get the content. Uh, we pay our fees. We get the content sometime in March. Everybody gets it. Um, end of February, beginning of March, and then off you go. Um, so level three is the only place that has the pathway. So, you know, there's the core and then there's the pathway. So you think, well, I got to prioritize what I'm going to change. Let me do the easy, the easy stuff first. Let's get the core done. So usually it's, it's not till, you know, six, five, six weeks later that you start hitting the, the modules. Uh, and I did private markets first. Unimpressed unimpressed. Uh, I think it's a waste of time. And then I uh, went to private wealth management and it was like, okay, this is, this can't be real. I mean, this can't be real. Um, it, it, you know, it just, um, I, can't, I see, I can't say anything particular. All I can do is just give an overall opinion. Here's what I think. It's their first year with this stuff. It's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. If the end of chapter questions are any indication of the quality of the exam writers they have, it's not ready. Don't take the chance. It's just simply not ready. It's not ready uh, is all I can say about it. Uh, let's see. Taking level one in November, what should be my revision strategy? Back in 10th grade, I revised the topic every 7, 30, 90 days. Yeah, th there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know about every seven days. I don't know about every seven days. But, yeah, regular revision, I, I would think. I can 
tell you haven't decided, but assuming you don't renew your contract to verify what's next for you. I have uh, the applied level. Uh, I have no, uh, no uh, um, de desire or plans to leave that uh, at all. None at all. For those interested in becoming a teacher after some time working for companies but not in academia, CFA is a better strategy than a PhD. Uh, well, um, I guess I'd have more questions uh, than that. A teacher where? Not in academia. Well, then, um, first, I should say a PhD does not train you to be a teacher. Uh, a PhD trains you uh, to be a researcher, not a teacher, a researcher. Some schools do offer a teaching seminars that you can attend to develop your teaching skill along with, um, along with what you're doing for uh, your research. But PhDs are researchers, not teachers. Universities don't hire teachers, they hire researchers. So if you don't have a PhD, you're not going to academia anyways. But you could be an adjunct faculty if you have enough experience in a particular field and you have a master's degree at least, you could be an adjunct faculty, but you're not, you're not getting paid a lot. You're teaching for the love of teaching, but you're not, you're not doing it for the money, I'll tell you that. So, we'll answer a couple of more because it's uh, getting dark outside. Unless I can, hang on, let's see if I can turn on the light out here and maybe I can turn the camera around. Uh, we got light. Light, 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 light. There we go, there's light. Okay, let's see how that does on the camera there. I don't know how that's going to work, but we will try and turn this around now. Uh, it's on a kind of like a gyroscope thing so give me a second here okay and how's the lighting on that one uh, okay I won't know if it's facing me or not for about 20 seconds I don't know if you can see me but it's gonna it's gonna be a while before I can actually see it. Uh, so it's how applicable the curriculum is and how helpful you're teaching being I'm being praised by the higher ups for applying logistic regression to analyze some fixed income. Oh look at that. Good, good, good. Trying to just answer the CFA questions here. Which is most similar to a cash dividend in terms of impact on investors' net worth? Stock dividend or share buyback? A well, stock dividend doesn't do anything. Um, so all a stock dividend does is increase the number of shares that are out there, but it won't change the valuation of the company. The, the, your, your, it'll lower the price of each share such that your, your, your value remains unchanged. Uh, so no, a stock dividend uh, won't do anything. Just passed level one, looking at level two, checked out your video on level two, but it's seven years old. Checked out my video on level two, but it's seven years old. What video is that? 
Or would you say it's still accurate or to do for an update? My video on level two. I don't know. You're 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 pointing to a specific video, seven years old. Um. Oh, you mean on? No, hang on. No, I took all the stuff off of YouTube. I don't know which video you mean. It's seven years. It's seven years old. Any pre-CFA activities I can do before fully diving in? Only, only the uh, prerequisite readings. You couldn't be more right about fighting for a spot at asset management. It's a tough grind to get there, and while you're there, uh, too, just because you made it doesn't mean it's a, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, I think you mentioned in level three, we need to remember the list, say, one to six steps in the effective governance model. Six elements, any advice on the extent we need to know the list? Well, when I say that, that you need to remember uh, a list, lists are not intuitive. Lists are probably one of the most disappointing ways of teaching, is teaching through lists, I, I, I think. Uh, lists, uh, as a general rule, lists should be in exhibits, period. And you should extract the main theme out of it, or... Um, what what the list is for, but generally lists should not be testable. They should not be part of the content uh, in any textbook. Lists really should be delegated uh, to uh, to an exhibit, um, unless it's you know something like uh, the courses you know how to. I don't know. Maybe it's something more process oriented. Like how to how to clean your data before, or prepare your data before regression. Well, now that's process, right? So you know you'd have steps that you'd have to go through. When I'm saying a list is is, uh, you know you've got a checklist of things that you go through. Like so, you know if you're going to uh, analyze a particular industry, you got a list of fifteen questions. Well, you know that's not that's not testable a list it should be in exhibits you if you were relying on teaching on teaching by lists it means you really don't understand what it is that you're presenting otherwise you wouldn't present it as a list it tells me that the author came across something and said well this looks this looks relevant i'll include it you know so teaching by lists is is uh is just unsatisfying Taking level one in August, when do you recommend mocks, right? When the open on your site? Um, they open 60 days in advance. Uh, no, I, I think that, that you would start mocks. You have your 28 day review period. I think that's where, where you would start it. I can recognize the hissing sound in the background. It's a little lizard thing, right? No, they're cicadas. There's cicadas. What's a good number of mock exams to do with the 28 day review period? Uh, I don't really know. Um, I don't know if there's a good number to do. Uh, I don't know. this stream online another six minutes I think I answer a few more questions given thoughts on decline in CFA content do you feel the charter will gradually lose its prestige I don't know um, it's not what it used to be uh, it's not as rigorous as it used to be so I don't know. I mean, uh, that's 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 a different different thing altogether. It's just uh, I think anybody who uh, did it six years ago probably faced a much more rigorous curriculum uh, than anyone who's doing it today.
Are you able to do a high-level overview of what the nuclear Canadian family would face if they wanted to relocate to Costa Rica? Yeah. Um, geez. Um, a whole family. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say don't do it. Uh, the culture, the culture shock would be too great, I think. Especially for kids, the culture shock would be would be too great. Now there are private schools that are English speaking schools. You don't actually have to put them uh, in in the local schools. But uh, given where the currency is right now, uh, and being that it's a family, one person you can adjust or you can ignore the culture. It is a different culture. But a family, now you have a bunch of people that have to adjust to it, and I guarantee you someone's not going to. Uh, and it's gonna be difficult. The more people that you have that have to adjust, adjust the harder it's gonna be. I, I would recommend not doing it. It would be my recommendation. Unless, unless uh, the taxes are so onerous uh, that the, the amount of tax that you pay is so high uh, that, that you really you know, feel that you have no choice. I think we got a fire over there on the horizon. Yeah, I think there's a fire going on out there. Let me see if I turn this around, if you can see the fire. It is the season for fires, and that does look like a growing fire on the horizon there. Let's see if we can get it there. A little bit more. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on it. I don't know if you'll be able to. Yeah, that's a fire going on out there. We got another fire that was a big one. I think two Sundays ago, it looked like a tire factory or something because it's just big billowing black smoke. Oh, I think I was doing a live feed on that one. I think it was Sunday or last Sunday. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is it weird if I only want to learn the CFA books curriculum but not take the exam? No. No, I don't think that's weird. Sorry, back to lists. Do you recommend we memorize them all or just process lists? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, where is that fire there? Still in the middle of the screen. Let's see if I can zoom on it a bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. But yeah, there's a fire going on out there. If you see, if you stop teaching CFA, I see a huge drop in subscribers on your site. No, I don't think that's true. Um, you know, even even if I stop, I mean, I got three years left. Even if I stop, readings don't change every year. Uh, so my voice would be in the videos for a number of years after that, because from year to year, uh, some readings don't change at all. So there's no need to there's no need to change anything. I don't think so. I think I think they're they're doing a, a good job of of tapering in new voices uh, into uh, into the videos. Uh, I don't think it would be it would be um, it would be a drop. Any reason why PDFs even after buying archive level not available? I'm trying to do some revisions, but PDFs are not there uh, also those videos are not available on laptop so the archive oh actually i just uh it's kind of blurry now isn't it let's zoom out a little bit there and see if we can clear that up um so the archive is available on the app uh, and only on the app uh, we can use a lower uh a lower uh, size file because it's on the app uh, when you have year after year after year with archives the streaming costs can start to get excessive so you have to find a way to take the load off the server uh, so the app does a very good job of doing that so there is a technical reason why uh, it would be on an app 
Um, but no, there are no uh, PDFs on that one. The PDFs change every year. It would be difficult uh, to start trying to manage PDFs for multiple years. I mean, it would be it would be brutally difficult to get that done. Uh, if I defer the exam, will the MM video access be available? Yes, it will. <clears throat> a fire in the belly of the beast. There's uh, lots of fires that uh, that happen. I'm surprised with, I am truly surprised with the number of fires uh, that I've seen since I've been here. Um, but they don't, there's not a lot of rules on what you can light on fire. So I have a fairly large property and a field beside me that I own. Well, it's a piece of land, but it's cleared out like a field. Um, and all of the debris and all of the leaves you bring over there and you just light the bloody thing on fire. Uh, and it can be a pretty big, <laughs> pretty big fire sometimes. There's no, there's no rule on that. Try that in Canada. Try to, you know, mow your lawn and pile up your grass in the front lawn. Just light the bloody thing on fire. See what happens. Um, big trouble. Uh, but here, you just light the whole thing on fire. So who knows? Maybe somebody just lit something on fire uh, out there. There. We'll just zoom right out, make it a little bit clearer. Okay, a couple more and then uh, we'll be done here. I was scheduled for May, uh, level one. Haven't finished the syllables yet. I have two books left. Well, you got time. So I have decided to defer the November. Can you say how I should prepare for November? Uh, better than you prepared for May. So whatever you did for May, uh, don't do that again. Bring it up a level. Uh, whatever you do, don't just say, oh, I've got time now. Let me get back to it. Because you'll forget most of what you've, you've learned if you... If you wait, I don't know, three months, four months before you restart. So just keep at it. What's the under, best way to understand your market outlook? I tried taking interest, but because of some terminologies and no practical experience, a few things go above my head and lose interest, level two candidate. Uh, there is a video on my channel uh, called Understanding the Market Outlook, and it will walk you through each screen and why I and what we see on each screen, where to find it, and what it means. So there is there is something there is something for that. I have my exam for May level one. Can I reschedule? I don't feel prepared. You can reschedule. Yeah. Registered for level one, November 24, purchase the practice pack. How long into the content after should I be starting the practice questions? I think I think you should uh, save them for like the 30 days before the exam and use them as a, uh, you know, benchmark uh, uh, for your knowledge uh, as, as testing material. As, as uh, I think, what, you got six mock exams in there? That's what I would use them for. I'd wait till that, that point in time. Some older level two and level three readings were removed. Would you be willing to share your CFA content on old readings? I don't have CFA content. Um, I sold everything. None of that stuff belongs to me. So I, I, I can't just make decisions about what to share. None of that stuff belongs to me. Any plans to add 2019 material in some time? I don't know. I'm... I'm not privy to those kind of decisions. L3 is tougher than L2? Not really, no. Okay, that's it for this week. I will see you guys uh, next, next Tuesday. Well, next Sunday night for the uh, market, questions about the market, or discussion about the market. Next Tuesday night for uh, regular CFA discussion. And uh, hope, hopefully they'll put that fire out at some point. Okay, I'm going to uh, hit uh, hit end. Ciao.